Probably have to do several videos to uh, do all this on TikTok, but I'll, I'll try and uh, piece together the whole thing on my YouTube channel. Um, I do um, a local rideshare um, company here in New Orleans when I, you know, sometimes I, you know, out of boredom and a little extra money on the side. And one day, Balin Levine and his crew hop into my car. And I'd kind of run across him before, but I didn't really know who he was. Um, and we, we had a very long ride and uh, turned out my dash cam was running the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so I got all this footage. Check some of it out. You're wrong. President Biden is in Peru attending a global summit. In a He's to meet on the sidelines right later today with Chinese street. President Xi Jinping. This is likely the last time the two leaders will meet as Biden leaves office in January. They're expected to discuss climate change and trade practices, among other issues. Incoming President Donald Trump has Turn said right he has found additional hefty tariffs on Chinese goods. Democratic lawmakers at the United Nations Climate Conference are asking world leaders to push ahead with efforts to rein in global warming following Trump's re-election. As NPR's Michael Conflict reports, the prospect of a major shift in U.S. climate policy hangs over the negotiations. Senator Ed Markey says one president can't stop global efforts to limit climate change and deal with its impacts. But Trump's re-election has rattled leaders at the climate meeting in Azerbaijan. Trump's expected to once again pull the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Bahamas Prime Minister Philip Davis says the world can't afford sharp swings in policy. The climate crisis does not pause for elections or, or to accommodate the sway of changing political ideas or tides. It demands continuity. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse says states like New York and California will double down on climate efforts if there isn't leadership in Washington. Michael Copley, NPR News. Trump has villainized the press since his first run for the White House. These days, he talks less about the news being fake, but more about punishing it. NPR's David Falkenfleck reports. The incoming president has sued CBS. He's also said he'd make it easier for people to sue news organizations for libel. He'd have reporters and editors imprisoned for shielding confidential sources, and that he'd strip broadcast licenses from major networks. In reality, the federal government regulates individual stations, not networks, but ABC, CBS, and NBC own 80 stations among them. Former Trump aides helped craft a conservative agenda that would cut funds for public broadcasters, including PBS and NPR. Only a percent or so of NPR's funds come from federal sources, but member stations get more. Before Election Day, Trump disavowed the larger plan, but he is posting similar ideas online. David Falkenflick, NPR News. A Southwest the call has been forwarded to voicemail. The person preparing to take off from the airport in Dallas last night. NPR's they missed this report. A spokesperson for Jeez. Southwest Airlines says flight 2494 is accessed safely back to the terminal after being struck just on the flight deck. The public says the crew is preparing the flight for the flight for any How you doing? Do you know a Balin Levine? Do I know what? Balin Levine? No. That's that's me. We're like a YouTube channel. Oh really? Yeah. We're here for like a um, we're here for like a month. I teach witchcraft on YouTube. Really? About 20 years. <laughs> Wait, what's your account? Uh, Uncle Birch. Okay. You know your voice lifts up from there. Really? Yeah, I, I watch a like, lot out of YouTube. I'm always watching like the Midas Touch. Uh, seven million? I'm at 10,000. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool, man. CIRC. Look. He's got 10,000 followers. Wow. That's cool. Bro, we got shot him out. <laughs> Wait, facts. I'm going to yeah, shout you out, bro. W Uber driver, go follow him. <laughs> so, you guys, you're doing content? Yeah. We're filming a little bit of pranks at the mall. So what's it? What's that? Oh yeah. That's that's what brought me to New Orleans in the first place. Can you like, man can you, like manifest getting like hose? Manifest getting what? Hose. Hose? <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. Love spells, sex spells, sex shit. I was doing that when I was like 16 years old. Wow. I used to do uh, 
I used to make this uh, kind of cologne, uh, aphrodisiac cologne. Really? We're going to be doing some cologne pranks, actually. Yeah. It became really popular. It was like a, almost like a drug dealer when I was 16, selling this to all the boys in the neighborhood. <laughs> That's awesome. It's really popular. So if I wear this cologne, I'll get immediate pussy. Well, you gotta, you know, get around the pussy and you know, not be an asshole. Exactly. Yeah, I get that. You can don't fuck be it the up. asshole. And don't be a pussy. <laughs> like it helps you. It like helps. Unless you, you know, but there's plenty of chicks that like that. Take a slight right of the avenue. So basically, it's like the media tap. Because like I'm trying to get in this like ditty, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know what you need. You can buy that stuff off my website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Uber Dog. Oh, you can get that. Uh, hey, what's your name again? Uh, Birch. Birch. Yeah, okay. Cool. Michael right now. Sebastian's right. FaceTiming me. Mr. Birch, can we uh, do a little like YouTube skit again? Sure. Ah, right, thanks. Oh, okay. Hello, uh, what should we do? Okay, we're gonna shout you out, okay? Okay. We're gonna... We're gonna say that your I'm, spells work. I'm a... I'm part of the group, but I'm actually a... Uncle Birch on YouTube. Uncle Birch! Just hit 10k, showing some love, y'all know. Showing some love. Oh, thank you so much. 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 Like and subscribe. Okay, you are the man of the hour. What's up? Alright, what's up, boys? Today, we're here with Uncle Birch. Yup. Hey, do you consent to being on camera? Oh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Spend most of my life on camera. Yeah, yeah, he's a YouTuber. TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all of it. Nice. Great. Yeah, there's the blue, the blue sky now. Everybody's jumping on that shit. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> he records music. Yeah. He does music? He's a producer. Yeah, yeah. I you know a, that Kendrick Drake beef? I got a few songs on uh, on YouTube. It's mostly like Ooh. activist music from the 90s. Nice. nice. Masturbate and smash the state was the biggest thing. Masturbate movie. and smash the state. <laughs> nice, bro. Hey, a bar. Dude, Mr. Burge, he, he sells cologne that can like get you immediate pussy. Yeah. Yeah. Unholyblends.com, man. Wait, what's the song called? X oil. <laughs> Alright, What's the song called? Like, I need that. Unholyblends.com. Masturbate what? Masturbate uh, and smash the state. Okay, and smash the state. He be on my channel. Yeah. He's a man of many thousands. <laughs> He's like Johnny Sense in a sense, bro. True. Ooh. Sebastian, bro. Who are the leaks up? Hey, uh, most of this I'm doing on a phone. Yeah. But I have to. Yo, yeah, this I is all. We're recording a YouTube oh, video there. Oh, hey, wait, guys, look at this video. Bro, that video goes so hard. Were you in like a like a motorcycle gang? You seem yeah. like you were. No. Really? I was a punk. Yeah. You seem like a cool guy, you know? Yeah, you know. yeah punk bands mostly up until uh, the 90s. I, I uh, co-founded the longest-running pirate radio station in this country. 
they're, uh, God, I think they're still streaming. But, uh, really? Technically, we beat the FCC. Mm -hmm. um, we made it, made it so people could get a license to access the airwaves without millions of dollars. That's, and, uh, that's awesome, man. It's a low power movement, uh, low, low wattage. Low wattage, and, yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, what happened is the churches came and bought up all of the airspace after we beat the FCC. Do you smoke? On, what's that? Yeah. Do you smoke? Okay, bet. Everything but crack and bet. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh, you do. Mr. Bird. Yeah. So, like, back in the day, like, so, like, what, what was your body count, like, per se? Like, with all this, like, all, like, it, you got, like, a hottie body count, or, like, you, you a man of, like, <laughs> Yeah, I was. Well, I was polyamorous for 20 years. Oh yeah. 20 years. And in in the witchcraft community, it's 85 to 90 percent female, so it's really hard to find. And the, and the guys are mostly gay, so a heterosexual male witch, especially a cute one, is yeah, yeah. quite a commodity. So I was wow. I was very busy. Oh. Uh, wow. for, during my polyamorous. So time. like, is there like witchcraft like? Bro, can we can we record this? Is actually awesome. Okay. Is that go with you? Yeah, Just have yeah, a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we can do an interview. Um, we actually also have a podcast called the Manly Mentality. Yeah, so, Manly okay. Mentality. It's like healthy masculinity, like well, no, okay. keeping so, in touch with so your masculinity. There's, there's a, uh, I forgot what the word is, but there's a stigma. Yeah, there's a stigma. Against, yeah, yeah. Uh, African American people and also people of color getting help they need because okay, a lot of men don't like to admit that they would need to go to the hospital, right? Yeah. And they wait until they see something like cancer or something until they really go get it checked out. But they just work so much and people have such a busy life. Yeah. To the point where they just kind of have to, in a sense, thug it out, which is kind of like you. Yeah. And so we're just talking about all different types of stuff about the man mentality. That's on your uh, podcast? Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. podcast for us. Yeah. This is my little brother, many, by the way. I'm very happy. Are you are you more into guys or girls? Uh, girls. girls okay. He's straight. He said that. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I didn't get my.